Hello, Dr. Kirk. I was just um, responding to your video on dual relationships in counselors and clients. And when looking at the ACA Code of Ethics, they clearly state within their um, ethical code that anything sexual or romantic is prohibited with client interaction relationships. Um, but then when they go on to talk about the extending counseling boundaries, so for example, if you were to have um, a pastor counseling in a church, they do discuss that, um, and what they discuss is really making sure that the counselor or the practitioner is documenting the boundary extensions. So they're saying that, you know, to create a document that's discussing what their interaction is going to be, the rationale for it, the benefit from it, possible consequences, um, you know, if unintentional harm does occur, then they want to look at um, the ending the relationship or attempting to remedy the harm. Um, they also touch upon counselors engaging in counseling with family. Um, there should be no, they're prohibited from engaging in any um, relationships on social media. So all of that comes into consideration with dual relationships. They do happen in a small community, but the Code of Ethics just very much explains that there should be some strict guidelines and documentation of what is going to be incurring within those boundaries. Um, to look a little bit further, I went and I had done a little bit of research and found an article um, because it got me thinking, coming from Catholic religion, you know, how does, how does uh, you know, confidentiality in dual relationships work when you go to confession? Um, you know, because what if somebody went into confession and they can, they confess that they even had raped or murdered somebody? And what I had found in an article, Catholic Priest Knowledge of Pastoral Codes of Conduct in the United States, it was written by Michael Kane in um, 2012, it was published. Um, what I found and what was really interesting is that the Catholic priests are bound by a code of pastoral conduct. And in the directory, they discuss that while they're in confession, anything that is said in confession cannot be shared, even if it, you know, comes to violate or is possibly harming themselves or harming other people. Um, this is completely different than the mental health profession because, you know, we discuss that confidentiality in the informed, con in the informed consent. So I just found that really interesting, um, you know, and then they went on and they discussed the same thing of providing an informed consent when they are working within the church, but what I, you know, when they're working within that setting of confession, they have to perform a different role and be there to listen, but not share any of that information. So I just found that to be interesting.